Let's take a look at Module 3. As we await approval from the IRB on your submission, we need to move forward in two directions in Module 3. We're going to be further developing what you've written so far into a formal Chapter 1 for your paper, and we will be planning for Chapter 2, the Literature Review, and beginning the process of searching for research. I will make a future presentation on how to write the literature review, but first we need to find some research articles before we can write about them, right? So first, we will turn the work you've already done, the problem or need statement, and the research project plan into a formal chapter one for the paper due at the end of the course. The rubric for chapter one provides excellent guidance for the expectations for writing and formatting this chapter. This presentation is meant to build on the information from the rubric. So stop this presentation, go visit the rubric for the chapter one assignment first. Start off the chapter with an overall introduction to the setting and your role in that setting. Set the stage for the reader. So if you are in XYZ school and you are the guidance counselor, start off with XYZ school located at blah, 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 with X number of students and a little bit about the diversity of the student population. The researcher is the guidance counselor, one of three guidance counselors in XYZ school, blah, blah. That's just an example. All right, after the introductory section, transition into your problem statement, which the problem or need your research will meet. So right here, you're going to pop in that problem need statement we already did. Do make some re any revisions that I mentioned when it was graded. Next, to discuss in general terms how you will conduct your research. In other words, pop in the research project plan. See how we're building on what we've done? Next, discuss the significance of your research. This was also probably in the research project plan. And discuss any limitations of your research. That was probably in your research project plan, but if you didn't do that or it needs to be built on further, limitations include things such as, this has been being done in XYZ school, which is in an urban environment. It may not apply to rural settings, or XYZ school has um, a very homogeneous population. It may not apply in settings with more diversity in the student population, etc. Those are examples of limitations of your research. If you have questions about limitations, contact me. Chapter one ends with a list of vocabulary words your reader will need to know to understand the rest of your paper. Any term your reader who is not in your specific field will need to, to know to fully understand what you're writing goes in this list. And this list will evolve throughout the course as you continue to work on your paper. So go back and add more terms as needed. This list should be in alphabetical order, and the rubric has suggestions for formatting this. Now all of that writing chapter one shouldn't take too long because we have a lot of the pieces already written. So the next step is to begin thinking about chapter two, which is the literature review. For some reason, the literature review is hard for folks to understand. I think it's because we've spent so much time and energy up to now focusing on your specific problem, your specific setting, and exactly what you're going to do, that it's hard to do what we need to do now, which is to take a step backwards. We're going to back up now. We're going to look at the big picture formed by the current existing literature base what is already known about your problem in general and specifically, and all the possible solutions, including the one you've chosen. In a perfect world, we would have taken this step before we did the submission to the IRB, but we have just 16 weeks, and we need to get that approval going as early as possible, so chapter two is falling now. So your job now is to change your focus, change your lens. We're going from a microscope, microscope perspective on your situation to think of it more like a telescope or binoculars. We want to look at the broader world and see what research has already been published. To effectively conduct this search, there are some specific steps I'm going to suggest and I really want you to follow these. Now is not the time for random Google searches. The first step, 
make a list of keywords. Organize those in an outline or a mind map, whichever works better for you. There are examples in the course. Um, in the course, we're going to look at those keyword lists and I will help you build those. Use the library databases or industry organization curations to find research articles. Again, not the time for random Google searches. Ask the distance librarians at Stout or other librarians you have access to for help. Ask your colleagues and myself. When you've exhausted those, when you do use Google, use Google Scholar, and I've given you the link here. I hope that helps with where we're going in Module 3 and, and how to proceed. I will make another presentation for Module 4 on how to write the literature review.